You are tuned in to another edition of Americana Music Profiles, brought to you by Americana Rhythm Music Magazine and AmericanaMusicMagazine.com. I'm your host, Greg Tutwiler. Let's jump right in to the next exciting interview. When friends Leaf and Adam get together, two members of the award-winning progressive roots band Front Country, they call it Small Town Therapy. We call it Good Stuff. They're my guests on this edition of the Americana Music Profiles to talk about their new 13-track record, Dreams and Circumstances. I am talking with Leaf and Adam uh, with the group Small Town Therapy. Welcome, guys, to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, great. So uh, you guys are uh, in Oregon. I'm in Virginia, so I appreciate you uh, uh, making the time connection work here for us today. Yeah, wonders of modern technology. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I was looking over the, um, the the press material that they sent over to us and, and uh, I di- didn't realize that, that you guys are actually also part of the band Front Country. I love the work that you do with that group, so um, congratulations on that. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Is this a, uh offshoot? side project is it um t- tell me how how you guys got together uh to to put this together does it predate the front country please i think it might predate front country yeah, <laughs> um Lee, Lee and i played in uh like a, a country band i think that's the first time we played together and um he also we also lived like he lived around the corner from me this is adam and um so, yeah, so he started coming over and, like, started working on music, um, and uh, that that eventually turned into the first album. Okay. So this is, um, uh, you have a, a, a new one coming out uh, in May, uh, Dreams and Circumstances, but that's not your first record then, together? No, yeah, so I guess we... Uh, we made one prior record, sort of put it out ourselves in 2014, um, and that was uh, a collection of tunes that came out of, of the time that we um, spent together in, in San Francisco. We lived in the Mission District. Okay, so that was going to be my next question. So you guys got together uh, in San Francisco. Were you doing um, uh, individual projects? Uh, tell me how, 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 this, how you guys got together and how all this began in the first place. Yeah, uh, you know, there was this great, still is, this great bar, uh, in the Mission District called, um, Amnesia, mm-hmm. um, that was, that was, uh, at that time run by a good friend, Sean McGee, um, and, uh, and Adam worked there, I guess, it did sound, at least, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, uh, around the time we started this, I think he, he had, had like a, a monthly sort of happy hour. Oh, hey, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, that, that ended up being a, a nice way to kind of, you know, work out some of the tunes on stage and um, sort of it's a really mm-hmm. nice venue for supporting local music and, and sort of folk music, mm-hmm. um, national touring acts, kind of like, you know, one of the secret best places to play in San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. And and were you guys uh, parts of other projects leading up to that, or, or, or pretty much kind of solo gigs at that point? We were playing in a bunch of other bands. Um, yeah, like like I said, we played in this. Like I, I think at first, like really played music, really met Leaf, um, playing this country band. Um, but we were doing like a bunch of different things. Like I played in, um, you know. A, a, an actual bluegrass band and um, in this mandolin quartet. Um, and, yeah, we played with a bunch of singer-songwriters and stuff. Yeah, we were just, you know, in, um, in there were so many different opportunities to play music, you know, in, mm-hmm. in the Bay Area. And so we, uh, you know, you know, we're doing as much as we could. Yeah, which is sort of how you could say Front Country started as well, right? There's kind of a, a vibrant community, people getting together sort of casually and sort of gigs to play music and 
uh, you know, you find people that you have chemistry with, and, and that starts to become a project. So you guys were actually part of the the creation of Front Country, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, fun fact: we uh, the first time the the members of Front Country got together it was because we had a, a monthly gig at a uh, uh, like a coffee shop. Okay, and and uh, it was it was Leaf and the original banjo player, and they. Needed to fill like three hours, um, <laughs> and thought that like maybe maybe just fiddle and banjo for three hours would be like too much to ask of the audience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, although we probably had a solid hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, a solid hour, which is like, probably an hour too much. <laughs> so, so was that one of those things that was kind of you know, hey, we've got something really cool here. Let's let's pursue this or was front country a little more intentional than that um that was like just by it was the most organic i mean that was 100 percent like a fun thing that we did um that was like separate from all of our other projects so like okay. everyone had pretty much like you know much more consuming things that they were doing and like front country was just like let's we can do whatever we want you know yeah. let's just yeah, you know, um, it was much more of a hang. Okay. Originally, yeah. So, so with with the um, with the, the project that the two of you have together, does that kind of have uh, equal priority now with Front Country? Is is one a little more um, uh, out out front than the other, or how, well, how do you guys balance that? Well, you know, one one of them takes up more time. Um, Spring Country is definitely on the road more. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, as far as priority, I I think it's, you know, you put equal, you know, making music and writing music, um, regardless of what group you're with, you know, kind of is the priority generally. Yeah, okay. Now the music that you guys do with Small Town Therapy um, certainly has a, a a grassy feel, but I, I'm guessing that's not really the focus. Am I am I getting that right? Uh, it, it feels a little no. more maybe gypsyish, jazzish, jazzyish kind of tones to it. It's sort of like it's like the uh, you know all all the influences that we you know all the all the different musics that we like. I don't even know. Actually, you know, it's sort of, we're just trying to make our own thing, write our own music. You know, all the influences are there because you can't help it. Right. But, yeah. And is it, uh, do you guys uh, include lyrics at all or is it predominantly or exclusively instrumental? Uh, it's all instrumental for, for your safety. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so I, I I was making that presumption uh, before I asked the okay. next question. Does it make it harder to do all instrumental when you're re- writing and recording, and even when you're performing? You know, if you're going to do two forty-five minute sets or however that works out, um, you know, a, a band that has two or three singers can bounce around and and uh, you know kind of change it up a bit. With you guys. When you're doing an all instrumental project, uh, does it make it more difficult to do that? Um, you know, I guess when I listen to music, I hear melodies, and that doesn't really depend on whether there are lyrics or not. Okay. <laughs> so, from the musical side, I'd say no, it does not make it harder. It might make it harder for the listener who mm-hmm. appreciates lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> And singers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sometimes sometimes when you're doing a, a set of uh, all instrumental music, like you feel compelled to explain more, like in between songs. Okay, okay. You know, like give, give folks something to hold on to. Like stories. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But then, but then you know, honestly, like people can draw their own conclusions and make their own connections and stories. And that's fine too, you know. Yeah. Um, sometimes, it, sometimes explaining a song with lyrics, um, you know, maybe 
maybe you're not letting the listener draw their own conclusions in that case, you know. Right. Like, maybe okay. you want to let them, you know, go go where they want to go. Um, but it does, it does, like, I feel like, you know, in between songs, like, you, you want to, uh, I don't know, give the, uh, give the listeners some context. Mm-hmm. I think that's where the, like, song titles come in, the instrumental, okay. you know, stuff. For me, it's like, I want to, like, kind of point them in the right direction. Right, okay. Well, I, I yeah, and I, you know, go ahead. Oh, go for it. I was going to say, you know, I, I, uh, I grew up in a family where, you know, my mom was a classical musician, and, and so actually, you know, I was exposed to long-form instrumental music before, uh, you know, music with lyrics, really. So it, okay. It, it's maybe, uh, maybe my own background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I read a, a, a quote where you um, were talking about one of the songs on the new record, uh, The Three-Legged Cat. And uh, I, I thought it would be fun to have you elaborate on that a little bit, just kind of as in uh, kind of adding to the answer to that question about instrumental versus adding um, uh, adding lyrics to tell the story of the three-legged cat walking into the room. It, uh-huh. I, I just yeah. I, I would be I'd, I would be interested to hear you tell me how that how you tell that story without words. You know, just with your instruments. Yeah. Well, um, I'm tempted to make something up uh, right now, but <laughs> um, well, that's the improv but, part, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, in that case, you know, sometimes there's sometimes you have a tune knocking around, or like an idea for one, um, or or maybe you've got something that's like finished, you know, and. Um, and you're like kind of waiting for the title uh-huh. to like you know kind of like you're waiting for the perfect title to that ex- expresses what the the vibe is you know? right right okay. um, and in that and in that case we were just playing we're actually playing like the same like phrase over and over again for like <laughs> an hour um, and it was hard because it was hard yeah. but also you know, yeah and, and Sometimes, you know, we were kind of like, "What is this? What are we doing?" And um, and during that process, um, just this three-legged cat walked by, and we were kind of like, "Oh, that's obviously the name." Okay. Like, obviously, <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Um, but but it does, you know, um, raise the question: like, uh, how often do you see a three-legged cat? Right. Like, we see three legged. We see three-legged dogs all the time. You know. Right. Right. But, yeah. Um, Three legged cat's kind of rare. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's, yeah, it seems like I know. But uh, thanks for the question. I'm definitely going to make up the convincing story. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, well, now, I, now I'm going to yeah. be looking for a three legged cat. Go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think it's also a chance to like uh, provide a little context of where we were when we wrote the tune and what we were doing. I mean, it was, you know, we were sitting in a backyard of a friend in, in the UK on tour of some country, and, and that, you know, and here's the three-legged cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's like, bar, it, it sort of, it, 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 it gives you a, a an opportunity to, to kind of, like, put yourself where we were when we were thinking of the tune. Right. right? So you can, maybe when you're listening to it, you know, think of a backyard in the UK and it's sunny and, uh, and here's a three-legged cat and it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. an English cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, when, when you, when you get together to, to write, uh, is that again, more of an organic process or do you guys, uh, you know, hey, let's we got a couple hours together on Wednesday. Let's sit down and try to come up with some tunes. And when you do that, again, kind of going back to the idea of, hey, you know, I've got I've got some lyrics. I need some music. With that element not being there, what is the inspirational process when you guys begin to put music together for new material? Usually, one of us will come up with kind of like the like a 